State Democratic Chair Jay Jacobs, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course. So we're here to talk about politics heading into 2022. It's a big year, both for the race for governor and the state legislature. Let's talk about the race for governor first, because I think that's on everybody's minds right now, given that the Republicans are making a lot of noise and we don't really know what's gonna happen with the governor. So in early July, a Siena poll found that about a third of people asked want the governor to run for reelection. It's a startling number. What do you even do with that as head of the state party? Well, remember something, you know, when you ask a question like that, you're not talking about who should run in his place and, you know, who, who else do you want? Um, you know, as, as a candidate goes, you have to run against somebody. And so I'm not that worried about that kind of a poll. I think if the governor gets through his current difficulties, uh, then he's going to be poised um, very well for a reelection campaign if he chooses to run. So I know that you have said that you support the various investigations into him, and I think that we're months away from a decision about will he, won't he run, but if there is a situation where he either is forced out of office or he decides not to run, what do you do then? Do you have a plan B, any names floating around? Well, we have a real strong bench. I mean, there are a lot of quality uh, potential candidates for governor. I, I don't have a worry about that. Um, you know, you just t you turn around and you've got, uh, um, you know, a whole bunch of people that would, would uh, be ready to run for governor if this governor does not. So uh, that's not a, that's not a concern of mine. I think we have to get through this current period to figure out um, you know what the future looks like and then see what the governor wants to do. What do you think goes into that decision as the party? I know obviously we're waiting for reports to come out. We don't know what they're going to say. But at what point does the party say maybe let's go in a different direction? Do you have a point in which that would happen? Well, you know, I, I think that. Um, there's always a point where you've got to look at whether uh, any candidate has a, a winnable race, has a shot to win the election. So that's really the most compelling part of it, I suspect. The other part of it is, you know, we have to look at um, what the actual uh, determination is by these various investigations. And there isn't just one. There have been multiple investigations. It, it turns out that the um, the federal investigation on the nursing home issue, um, uh, uh, they determined they were not going to pursue. Uh, that particular controversy has been put to sleep. Well, let's see what happens with the others. It doesn't indicate what will happen with the rest of them. But we have to take a look at them. And obviously, we want a candidate that's viable. Uh, and viability is based upon the fact that they can get elected. Right, exactly. And I think, like I said, I think we're months away from that decision. And as you also said, I think that you do not have a shortage of people who would like to run for governor if he is not the candidate. But looking at the issues, Republicans are looking at a lot of issues in their race for governor. Their candidate, Lee Zeldin, is really highlighting crime and cost of living. And I know that those are both issues that Democrats are focusing on as well. But what do you see as the top priorities for a candidate for governor? What do you think they should focus on to really get the attention of voters? Well, I think if it's this governor running for re-election, um, I, I think he has an excellent record, and he's done an awful lot that um, I would say to you um, he'll be able to present to the voters in a very positive way. You just have to take a look at what where New York State was, and um, not just fiscally, but even uh, uh, in infrastructure, to see where it was and where it is now. And I will tell you that uh, he's done a great job. And Democrats generally have uh, done an excellent job in you know getting New York to where it is today, and, and you know we've had our difficulties with COVID, and the leadership of the governor has helped us through that in large measure. But um, you know uh, New York is, is strong. Um, the infrastructure improvements that Democrats have made un under this governor's leadership are certainly something we can be proud of. We're looking to move us into the future, and you know the Republicans, uh, you know they're in a tough position, but they they do make a lot of noise. And frankly, you know, this nonsense about defund the police and all the other things that they're trying to pin on, you know, mainstream Democrats is, is, is a farce. Any, any, it's as ridiculous as us trying to pin on Republicans some of the far right nonsense that's, uh, you know, prevalent in their party. It's just, it's just not realistic. So they can do their thing, but the people of New York State are smart. They know what the story is and they'll be able to see it. And I think they'll make the right choice. So speaking of all of that, that brings me to my last question for you. Obviously, we have the races for the state legislature as well. Back in 2020, we did see a new slate of Democrats that identify as Democratic Socialists join the legislature, mostly in the Assembly, a little bit in the Senate. And that seems to confuse a lot of people because we have a lot of moderates in the legislature. 
Do you see the democratic socialism movement as the future of the Democratic Party, since some think that it's getting steam? Well, let's take a look at the recent Democratic primary in the city of New York, one of the most progressive places in the country. What happened? 70% of Democratic primary voters, the voters who came out, uh, rejected the DSA, the far left, and the candidates that were endorsed and supported by them. 70% rejected them. So I, I don't think it's the future of the Democratic Party. I think they have a place in the party. I think their voices should be heard. I think their passion and, and, uh, and vision does move us a little bit further to the left than we might normally go, us in the progressive center. And I think that's a good thing. But let's not make the mistake of thinking for a moment that uh, the far left uh, is going to be uh, driving the, uh, the engine of the Democratic Party in the years to come. Uh, the primary voters of New York City have proved that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that in a couple of districts here and there, which tend to be far left in their constituency, they're going to elect um, far left uh, legislators and the like. That's going to happen. But look at overall where we are in New York State as the Democratic Party. We are a, a center party that's progressive. We've done progressive things. We're going to continue to do that. But we're not running this uh, 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 this car off the cliff. We're just not going to do that. And I think in upstate districts, too, I, I see the viability of a DSA candidate maybe not being so great, especially in competitive districts. But that's something right. that we'll have to watch in the coming years and the next election cycles as either more candidates like that get elected or they don't. But we'll leave it there. State Democratic Chair Jay Jacobs, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.